So I'm sure a lot of you anime fans out there know about the classic Studio Ghibli film, Kiki's Delivery Service, directed by Hayao Miyazaki. However, did you know that this classic film is actually based off of a children's light novel? And I'm going to lie to you guys, I didn't know it either. But the novel adaptation of Kiki's Delivery Service is done by Aiko Kadono, and is in fact part of a massive amount of other children's stories, which you may or may not know. And I will not lie to you guys, I was wholly surprised to see this. Like, I was walking through a convention one time, and a vendor just happened to be selling this book, along with a novel adaptation of My Neighbor Totoro. And I was completely shocked. I did not know what to expect. So I went ahead and bought the book just to see if it was the same as the movie or not. And surprisingly enough, there were quite a few differences between the book as well as the film. So today, I will be comparing both the book and the film of Kiki's Delivery Service. And this will actually be the first book versus movie video that I have done. So let's get started, shall we? So to start off with, the plot for both is very similar, but there are some major differences which I will address later. But as for the novel itself, it was actually at a good near 200 pages, at about 197. But the movie itself is about an hour and a half, however both have very different executions for plot-wise. Now for one thing, we do get some more backstory in the novel about witches themselves instead of in the movie. For instance, the movie mo focuses more on Kiki's travels to the big city, as well as her adventures there, whereas in the novel, we get a little bit of backstory before she takes off for the city. And we discover that witches in this universe are actually sort of a dying breed. We come to find out that each witch now has a unique power that is to them. They only have the one power compared to before when they used to have multitudes of power. For instance, Kiki's mother has a major gift with herbs, as well as creating medicines or planting flowers. Essentially, she's a herbologist, whereas Kiki's specialty is flight. And along the way, we actually find Kiki meets another witch who has skills in fortune telling. But I'm getting off track here. So like I said, we do get to see more of witches in the book than I believe in the film. But, as for other things, there are some minor tweaks that we see here and there. I do like how they kept it similar. Like with Kiki, she still has the radio that her father gave her right before she left her hometown. And it's there in both the film and the book, which is nice. As well as Gigi, still being the same, being a bit of a snarker. But, Kiki, in fact, did not get the travel bag until far later in the book compared to the movie where she already has it. Now, another thing that is very different is some of her interactions. But let's talk about some of the major plot points that are addressed here. And as you can see in the book and the film, they are very, very different, but for very obvious reasons. For instance, let's start with the film. One of the biggest plot points of the movie was in fact Kiki at one point having both her broom broken and then at one point actually losing her powers, which results in her or also losing her connection to Gigi. So she could no longer hear Gigi talking and she could no longer fly like she used to. And this is in fact tied to her loss of self-confidence, like she starts having doubts about herself and apparently this ties into her magic which results in her losing the ability to fly for a short amount of time until the very end of the film. However, nothing like this happens in the novel adaptation, I noticed. She doesn't have these moments of self-doubt where it causes her to lose her magic. She does question herself sometimes, but not to that certain degree. And in fact, her broom does break, similar to the film, but her broom breaks after, apparently, she winds up saving a young boy from drowning in the ocean during a major storm on her day off. Now I would say the major moments of conflict or action that occur within the book, and notice how I say conflict with air quotes here, because like I said, this is a children's novel. 
But the two biggest moments of action would be at one point when she actually has to chase down a moving train to get the instruments for a band of musicians who are there to perform a concert during the middle of winter for the town. And the second one actually being her having to find a missing piece for a clock, for a clock tower, as a matter of fact, for a yearly tradition the town does, which is running around the entire town. Does she steal the piece? No. She actually goes out of her way to fly straight into the clock handle and moves it by herself to the 12 position, which that alone was actually pretty cool. I won't lie. It definitely made me perk up a little bit to find that she would do something that crazy. But like I said, there is no major conflict in the novel such as there was in the film. Does that make the book or movie bad? No. I think both are very well done in their interpretations of the story, and in fact, I like how they're both very different from each other. But they each tackle a different issue. For one, Kiki in the movie has to deal with her own fledgling self-confidence and build herself up as her own person again, despite this. Whereas Kiki in the book has to be dealing with other issues, like she is essentially the delivery girl of the town and has become such an icon that people rely on her. To a major degree, in fact, if I'm remembering in the book correctly. But more than that, each one deals with the major issue of one ma big thing, one major theme, and that is moving out to strike out on your own, which is portrayed in the book and the novel and the movie very well. It really tackles that whole thing of the struggles of living by yourself, such as finding a new place to live, finding a job where you can apply your skills, all of that. It tackles that movement from adolescence and childhood to being a full-fledged adult. But I do find it wholesome how in the book we do see her reunite with her parents for a short amount of time before immediately running back to her new home. But I do like how in the book she does not lose her connection to Gigi. Like, when I found that in the film, I was just completely shocked. But moving on, both are very well done interpretations. And I highly recommend one or the other, if you're interested in getting a different perspective, if you're in for a different type of story. But let's move on to the score, shall we? So all in all, I would give Kiyi's Delivery Service, the novelization, a good solid 9 out of 10, and I feel comfortable putting it right there. Because while there is no major conflict like there is in the film, it, like I said, it is a children's novel. But all in all, it was a very nice, wholesome read. I definitely enjoyed it and allowed me to just take a break from all the major action and other stories that I have read before, and it gave me a nice breather. And I will not lie to you guys. I enjoyed the unique experience of covering this novel. Now, if you guys want me to cover any other anime novels, or if you actually want me to find some more novelizations of more of the Studio Ghibli movies, let me know in the comment section down below. If I can, I will track them down, read them, and review them, and you all can expect them in another video. And once again, you guys, thank you so much for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. I don't know what I do to grab your all's attention or earn your all's respect or love, I don't know, but I hope I can continue to do that. This is Rambling Collector, signing off. Have an awesome day, readers.